needs a voice. The woman Jika, let us work together for a shared future. Part of the walking together is actually me conducting your action and you conducting our action. So we know about you, about time our brothers and sisters of Australia got to know us and come and walk with us and walk our way and dance and that's what it's about. Letting the feel the spirit be a part of you. But also speaking the language of the land so that Murup and all them, all them spirits understand what you're saying. Also to be able to, you know, you could sit down with the mob and listen, but also what knowledge you get, you know, treat it with respect. response is a project by Initiatives of Change Australia. It's a wonderful invitation to become open to the truth of this country. It invites all Australians to become involved. For the First Nations peoples of the country, it is a chance to tell the truth of what's happened in the history of this country. For non-Indigenous people, it's a real opportunity to be open to listening, to learning, to understanding. It's what's needed for us to move into really a much better future for our country. statement is that opportunity where we can reach across the political divide and actually achieve a fundamental change in this country, structural reform that really does do us all proud as Australians. We want people to be curious about what's happened in this country and we want them to feel that they can make change. The Uluru Statement calls for three things. Voice, treaty, truth. What is really important here is that the voice is constitutionally enshrined. And the reason why I'm so strongly supporting this voice is because it is how we come together and strongly speak and organise more effectively to change such legislation, to change the system. Our Uluru Response Project has three components. So the first is a series of national education forums with First Nations keynote speakers sharing their truth. The second is um, a series of local projects co-designed with First Nations peoples, which is really exciting. And the third is really almost any action that anybody could take right, to learn more, to re-educate themselves. This could involve um, watching videos. It could involve reading, reading more books, going and hearing people talk, engaging in local activities joining your local reconciliation group, coming to IFC, tuning in with us, hearing what we're doing, and then deciding, well, what's my role in all of this? How will I respond? I'm going to recite the Uluru Statement now, and I hope you feel what I felt in that room in the heart of the country. We gathered at the 2017 National Constitutional Convention. Coming from all points of the southern sky, make this statement from the heart. Our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander tribes were the first sovereign nations of the Australian continent 
and its adjacent islands and possessed it under our own laws and customs. This our ancestors did according to the reckoning of our culture from the creation, according to the common law from time immemorial and according to science more than 60,000 years ago. This sovereignty is a spiritual notion, the ancestral tie between the land or Mother Nature and the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples who were born therefrom remain attached there too and must one day return thither to be united with our ancestors. This link is the basis of the ownership of the soil, or better, of sovereignty. It has never been ceded or extinguished and it coexists with the sovereignty of the Crown. How could it be otherwise that a people's possessed a land for 60 millennia and this sacred link disappears from world history in merely the last 200 years? With substantive constitutional change and structural reform, we believe this ancient sovereignty can shine through as a fuller expression of Australia's nationhood. Proportionately, we are the most incarcerated people on the planet. We are not an innately criminal people. Our children are alien from their families at unprecedented rates. This cannot be because we have no love for them. And our youth languish in detention in obscene numbers. They should be our hope for the future. These dimensions of our crisis tell plainly the structural nature of our problem. This is the torment of our powerlessness. We seek constitutional change to empower our people and take a rightful place in our own country. When we have power over our own destiny, our children will flourish, they will walk in two worlds, and their culture will be a gift to their country. We call for the establishment of a First Nations voice enshrined in the Constitution. Makarata is the culmination of our agenda, the coming together after a struggle. It captures our aspirations for a fair and truthful relationship with the people of Australia and a better future for our children based on justice and self-determination. We seek a Makarata Commission to supervise a process of agreement making between governments and First Nations and truth-telling about our history. In 1967 we were counted. In 2017 we seek to be heard. We leave base camp and start our trek across this vast country. We invite you to walk with us in a movement of the Australian people for a better future. That's the Uluru Statement.